What's up everybody, hope you're having a good day. So with this video, I wanna talk about uh, Young Dolph, obviously, you're gonna see that in the title. Um, but but mostly I wanna focus on, um, and this is a little, a little outside of what happened, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through some other stuff, but basically I wanna focus on how is his death, his unfortunate, uh, untimely death, going to affect his record sales in the coming weeks? Because if you look at Nipsey Hussle, when he passed away, his album uh, skyrocketed uh, to a new peak and he also got his uh, first top 40 hit that song he had with uh, Roddy Rich. so and then you've seen it countless other times like when an artist dies like XXX died his, his record sales shot through the roof um, Juice World when he died his record sales went through the roof um, so there's always a cause and effect if you will with record sales so we know for a fact that his sales are going to be much higher this coming Friday than they've ever been in his career. And that's very sad. Listen, I've been, an, I've been a Young Dolph fan. I've said this in a, another video. Uh, I've been a Young Dolph fan for about seven years, maybe even eight years. I think, I, honestly, I think it was when um, East Atlanta Memphis came out. I think, that, I think that's when I first heard about him. I mean, I wasn't on him like when he dropped his first mixtape in 08. Um, I just, I hadn't heard about him, but I was such a big, I'm such a big Gucci Man fan, especially his old stuff that uh, anything he dropped, I was checking out. So I checked out the Young Dolph thing, and I was like, man, he's fire. Matter of fact, well, I was listening to it again uh, after he passed away. One of my favorite lines is when he said, uh, $10,000 paint job will get you unlimited blow jobs. Like, I, I don't know exactly how it goes, but I just love that line. It was so funny. And, and that's one of the things I, I really like about Young Dolph is um, his, his rhymes were just, like sometimes they were just so off the wall, they would just catch you off guard and make you laugh. You know what I mean? Like. I, when I was listening, to, I remember I was listening to Rich Slave last year when it first came out, and I was doing my jog around the neighborhood at the time when I still lived in Jacksonville, Florida. And I remember like so many lines would just hit me while I'm running. I would just start like literally laughing to myself as I'm running down the running down the road. So like his stuff is actually funny, and I think that's one of the main things that people liked about him was he was just real and funny, and um, I, I think he was a unique voice in trap music. I really do. And it's crazy, that dude was grinding since, like I said, 2008, that's when his first mixtape dropped, up until 2021, and he kept getting bigger each year. That's very rare for an artist to take, to, to usually artists hit their peak early, you know what I mean? Like 08, 09, 2010, and then they fall off, let's say, you know, most people. Young Dolph consistently built up a fan base and got bigger and bigger and bigger he was at his peak in 2021. Well, what is that, like almost 15 years after he first started? Most artists come and go in like two or three years. You know, they, they have a really big song or two really big albums or two really big mixtapes and then they fall off. Like, you gotta remember something. When Young Dolph's first album came out or first mixtape came out in 08, that was when like OJ the Juice Man was, was, was hot as shit. And, and I'm a huge OJ fan too. But he's, he's not hot right now, you know? I mean, his new uh, mixtape that came out earlier this year, I thought it was fire, but no one's talking about it. You know what I mean? So very rarely, how many artists that were hot in 08 are still hot now? You know what I mean? I I'm not even gonna say he was hot in 08. Like he probably wasn't that known, but like started in 08 and they're just now getting like, Rich Slave debuted at number four on the charts, sold almost 70K in the first week. That is gigantic numbers for an independent artist. Like I... Honestly, I, I really, really respect Young Dolph's grind more than anything. Because almost, I would say 99% of rappers, they would assign to Yo Gotti when Yo Gotti reached out. You know what I mean? They would assign to a major label, you know, make the quick bag. But Young Dolph had a vision that he wanted to be bigger. Um, not even necessarily bigger, but he just wanted to do it on his own and like, uh, you know, make all the money off his hard work. And it was working. And on top of that, he signed Key Glock, um, who I guess, from what I've heard, they're 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 uh, related by uh, marriage, so they're not technically blood, but you know, technically they're like cousin and laws, I guess. But he signed Key Glock, and Key Glock also sells crazy numbers. That on an independent label. A lot of major label artists can't even get, you know, their label popping, you know? So the things he was able to do in his life in the rap game were just incredible. And um, I really, you know, 
the one good thing is at least his family is going to be well taken care of uh, this, with the sales being higher. Um, my prediction is uh, Rich Slave is going to re-enter probably around the top 15, maybe top 20. Uh, Paper Rod Illuminati, that was his technical last album to drop. Even though it wasn't his album, his name was attached to it as the, you know, the head artist or whatever. He was on about half the tracks. I think that's going to reach a new peak. That, that originally peaked at number 22. I did a video on that one when it first came out. That one's probably going to jump back up into the top 20. Um, I think that Bulletproof will probably uh, jump way up to a new peak. I think when it first came out, it debuted at like number 36. That one's probably going to be in the top 20. Because 100 shots, you know, people are really curious now with what happened. Because, you know, there was an attempt, attempt on his life before. So a lot of people are streaming 100 shots. So speaking of 100 shots, I think that's going to be his um, <clears throat> his first solo song to debut in the top 100. I don't know exactly where it's going to hit. Like, I know Cut It with, with OT Genesis was prior to this, his biggest hit that he was on. That uh, peaked at number 35. So that was his only top 40 hit. And then he had one other hit that he was on with Gucci Man that hit like number 95 on the chart. So it's definitely gonna go higher than 95. Um, if I had to predict, I don't know if it'll hit top 40, but I, I think 100 shots is probably going to um, maybe get around like in the in the 70s or 60s. So it's gonna be his highest charting solo song, without a doubt. Um, it's a, it's a, That's really a shame that like an artist has to die for someone to go like check him out. Like Young Dolph is fire. He's been fire for a long time. And it's just a shame that people don't catch on until they until they die, you know what I mean? But um, but yeah, cra crazy uh, what happened. And I, I see a lot of people saying like, oh, what was he doing, you know, going solo dolo? Why was he not with security? Why was he not, you know, why didn't he have friends with him? Hindsight's always twenty twenty. but let me tell you this. You can, you can search Young Dolph on YouTube and you can see videos that he did like interviews. I'm talking in the hood of Memphis, like 20 guys around him in the projects, um, from like 10 years ago. Like he's just, he was a hood guy. He's from the hood. So he felt comfortable in that environment. You know what I mean? So he didn't even think he, you know, he was just comfortable. It's like, he didn't even think that, Oh, I don't need security. You know, I, I the city fucks with me heavy. So I, 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 I was watching some old performances he did at like, I think it was called Elevator or something, some, some uh, hood club in Memphis, packed out with, you know, hood black people, no white people to be found, obviously. I mean, I would go in there, I don't give a fuck. You know, if I wanted to see him, I would go. But um, but in the video, there was not one white person to be found. But um, you could tell that he, he's used to being in that hood environment. So what, going to the hood cookie store, I mean, you don't even second guess that. You don't even think twice about that. You know what I mean? I mean, in all the scary, scary situations he's been in, that was probably one of the least scary. I mean, the dude, like, go look up the videos. He, he's been in the hood, you know? And even, and here's what people don't get. Even if he did have, I, I think he did have somebody with him at the cookie store. That's not confirmed. I, I don't fully know. But even if he did have, like, three or four people, and let's say Keylock was with him, what's to say that people wouldn't have just sprayed up the whole crew? And then now Keylock's passed away, too. And even if you do have security, you know, that doesn't guarantee that you can't get got. You know what I mean? So sometimes if someone's determined enough to, to get you or whatever, maybe it's just your time to go, unfortunately. But yeah, he was just used to being in the hood. You know what I mean? Like, go look up those videos. Like, uh, Young Dolph, 2012, performing in Memphis Club. Like, I mean, he's been in the hood. And I, I've been in clubs like that too. Like, I, you know, like you just get comfortable. It's like a, it's second nature at, at some point. You know what I mean? So, um... I know people in like their cushy beach houses who've never, you know, had to experience anything. They're not going to understand that. But but I, I get where he's coming from. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm not some like hardcore hood dude. I'm not I'm not from the hood. But I've never been uh, scared to go to the hood. I've never been like one of those like white people that's like, oh, I could never walk in that place. Like, no, I'll fucking go anywhere. I've been to hood clubs. Fucking look up the real Tang in Jacksonville, Florida. I can't tell you how many times I've been there. I, I've been there one time there was a shooting inside there. You could Google the shooting. It was like 20, 2019, like beginning of 2019. Google the real Tang, Jacksonville, Florida shooting. You'll find the article. I was there that night. I was in that fucking place. The, the club just scattered. It was after hours club. I was there at like fucking four in the morning or three in the morning. I think they shut down like five or something. But yeah, it was crazy. You know what I mean? Like 
I was never scared. So I, I get why young Dolph wouldn't be scared. I mean, he's actually from the hood. I wasn't actually from the hood. I mean, I wasn't rich. I wasn't well off. You know, it would have been nice to be in that position, but I wasn't. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't come from money. So, I, I mean, I grew up playing basketball. You know what I mean? Like, around a bunch of hood dudes. Like, I mean, some of the, at the time, I, you know, back then, they, they treated me differently. But now that I'm a grown ass man, when I go out to hood black clubs and stuff, like, they fuck with me heavy. So, you know what I mean? Like, you can't live in fear. What, what's meant to happen is meant to happen. And, and it's such a fucking shame that this did happen, especially at the peak of his career, after all the grinding he did. You know what I mean? It's really fucking sad. I actually, I filmed a video about it. Uh, I, I posted it for maybe like a couple minutes and then I took it down because I, I, didn't, I didn't feel like the energy was right. Um, I had just come off of a festival that I was at. Um, and so my mind was a little bit a little bit fucked up still and I was still recovering from all that. I mean, it was like three days straight. So I was just, I didn't feel like the energy was right in that video. So I wanted I wanted to kind of make this video to kind of make up for that and then also talk about the sales. But yeah, listen, if, I understand if you're not from the hood, if you're not comfortable going to the hood, then you're gonna think differently than someone that grew up there especially. But like, even me, like I, you, like I said, you can't live in fear. Like I'll, I'll go to the hood right now if I have to. Like if there, if there was a cookie shop, where I live and I was like, oh, I really want those cookies. I don't give a fuck where it's at. You know what I mean? And I understand he was on a different, you know, you can't compare a regular person. You know I mean? Everyone's the same. Everyone's equal, but it, people might have more of a target on their back if they have money. I get that. And if they have street beefs or whatever, but even then, I, there's people that don't like me and I'm not even famous, but there's people that don't like me. Matter of fact, I saw one of the faggots at the fucking festival I was just at who was running his fucking mouth on the internet about me. And he saw me, he didn't fucking do shit because he's a fucking pussy. And I'm sure Young Dolph was thinking the same thing, that these dudes talking shit are just fucking pussies. You know, you, most people aren't really about it. You running your fucking mouth on the internet, you're not gonna do fucking shit when I see you because you're a fucking bitch. You know what I mean? But then of course, sometimes there are people who are gonna do stuff and, and your time could come. And I personally think that was a paid hit. I really do. Um, especially now that the news came out that that same Mercedes, the white Mercedes that was used in it, um, was also used in another murder uh, around the same time as a young Dolph murder. Um, so, and like I said, it didn't seem personal to me. You know what I mean? Because usually with a personal murder, you know, you're gonna kind of want them to, I, I would think, I mean, I've never committed a murder, you know what I mean? But I would think that like, if you're angry enough at somebody um, and mad enough at somebody, that you want them dead, if it's that personal, you're gonna want them, you're, you're gonna wanna like fucking say what you say to them and then like let them see your face and be that, and that be the last face that you saw. But these guys were covered up, masked up, you know what I mean? So my guess is um, they were probably paid to do it, probably, you know, or, or maybe not directly, but like, you know, in the hood, like in the, in the you know, in the, in the streets. Someone might just put out the word, like you can get the word out, like, hey, I'll, um, 50 stacks on this on this guy, you know, if, if you get it done or whatever the case may be. Um, so easily they could get the word out and then whoever does it, you know, you get the money later. Fucked up though, like even let's say it was 50K, 50 racks or even 100 racks or whatever. You could go get a job and make that in a year, like, and you're not putting yourself at risk. I mean, these guys are going to get caught. They are going to get caught. You know what I mean? It's gonna happen. Even with the masks on and everything, like there's still ways they can tell who you are. They can follow like cameras in the sky and see where the Mercedes came from, where it was, you know, at the different times of the day. Like it's crazy the technology they have. And I'm not saying all murders get solved. That's definitely not the case. As a matter of fact, I read an article that only about half of Memphis murders get solved. I think I think it was like 40% gets, or maybe 60, 55% get solved. 45% don't get solved. So, um, I'm sure they're thinking in their head like, oh, there's a good chance they won't get caught. But are you willing to flip a coin on your fucking life? Like a 50-50, heads or tails type of thing? Heads or tails, heads, boom. You know, you, you get off and then the other side, if it hits the other side, then you're going to prison for life or getting the death penalty? That's just crazy to me, man. That's fucking crazy. But again, every, everything's a product of your environment. Like I, I do a lot of things and think a lot of ways because of the, the things I've seen and the things I've done and the things I've been around. You know what I mean? Like, like no fucking father, shit like that. Like it really does affect you as a man like cause a woman can't raise a man. So if you're raised by a single mother, um, 
or even young Dolph, like in his case, like a grandmother, like when you don't have that guidance, you, you kind of just have to figure everything out on your own. And, and you make a lot of more, a lot more mistakes than a, a, a dad who lays everything out for you, lays the foundation, you know, tells you, oh, you're going to do this, this, and this. And you don't have to think as much about it. Like being in the military, like, oh, be here at 630, you're good to go. You know what I mean? Like you got that guidance that, but whatever, I'm kind of rambling, but RIP Young Dolph, uh, really, really uh, unfortunate, um, sad, um, craziness. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Talk to you later.